Welcome to Tea Time, the only video game show that answers the questions no one cared enough to ask. This week's show is brought to you by Deja Vu. It's that feeling that you're seeing or hearing something that you've experienced somewhere before. It's that feeling that you're seeing or hearing something that you've experienced somewhere before. It's fitting that it's sponsoring us this week because I'm pretty sure I've already mentioned that Banjo-Tooie is my favorite game of all time. If not, surprise! <laughs> but I'm only gonna talk about one aspect of it this time. I'm not gonna try to convince you that it's the best game ever, but I do think that it improves upon Banjo-Kazooie in every possible way. And here to help me break that down is another old favorite, Kazooie. Welcome back, Kazooie. You know, Deja Vu is our sponsor this week and it kind of makes sense since you've been on the show before. <laughs> Well, yeah, I'm working on that. You want to talk about your second adventure? <laughs> Believe me, I want to forget about that one too. Now let's talk about why Banjo-Tooie is the best sequel ever made. First of all, there's no power drain. You know what I'm talking about. You start a new adventure, and for some reason the hero seems to forget everything they learned in the last game. The classic example is Metroid. You'd think Samus could just hold on to all those fancy missiles once the credits roll. But when you boot up Banjo-Tooie, you can perform every single action you learned in the first game. Ground pounds, egg spitting, even flying and invincibility. And then all those powers get expanded. Your ground pound becomes a drill attack so you can break through rocks and even unscrew certain items. Kazooie also gets new egg types, letting you spit fire, ice, grenades, and even tiny little wind-up Kazooies. Maybe the biggest power-up is the ability to actually split up. Separately, Kazooie is much more nimble and acrobatic. Banjo himself can use the backpack for cover, hop around for sack races, and even sleep inside to regain health. In fact, pretty much every mechanic evolves. You remember all those goofy Mumbo transformations? This time around, you actually play as Mumbo and activate special magic pads. A new, maybe a little insensitive character named Humba Wumba handles the transformations instead, and each one has far more uses than they did in the first game. Boss battles are also far more intricate, and most of them are tied to the part of the level they lord over for story reasons. And speaking of boss characters, the cast in general grows. Bottles, the friendly mole who taught you all those moves in the first game, straight up dies at the start of Tui. But he's got a cousin, or uncle, or something like that, named Sergeant Jam Jars, and he teaches you all the new stuff this time around. You also get to meet Bottle's wife and kids, and plenty of fan favorites like Boggy make a comeback. And this is probably the biggest improvement of all, bigger and better levels. Banjo-Kazooie's stages are big, sure, but Banjo-Tooie's levels are so big that they give you teleport pads to get to the key areas of the map. The levels aren't just basic fire and ice types either. In fact, the fire and ice level is the same. Hailfire Peaks is a mountain range that's freezing on one side and boiling on the other. You've got Jolly Rogers Lagoon, which is a pirate town plus a sunken city, and Cloud Cuckoo Land is just a bizarre series of flying islands like a jello castle and a big trash can. And finally, all these levels are interconnected in brilliant ways way before Dark Souls did the same thing with its maps. Jolly Roger Lagoon pumps water into Grunty Industries, because, you know, the factory needs water to run. So swimming through that pipe can carry you between those levels. Gathering all the collectibles even requires you to do that sort of thing. Push an ice cube off a platform in Cloud Cuckoo Land, and it'll tumble down to Hailfire Peaks, cooling off some of the lava. And just like the teleport pads in each level, there's a train system that runs between a few of the stages. Remember when I mentioned the bosses earlier? Well, the boss of Glitter Gulch Mine is a rock monster called Old King Cole. Beating him gives you access to the train. So all these mechanics rely on each other in really fun and interesting ways. Well, that was a lot of information. You should probably just go play the game for yourself now. Or play ukulele which is a spiritual successor that might have inspired this episode. Are you shilling your own games now? Fair point, fair point. Well, thank you for being here again. Give it up for Kazooie, everybody. So that's my answer. And no, I'm not gonna bother you by going over every point again. But if you have some sort of question or obscure topic you'd like me to dive into, go ahead and leave that in the comments below. Love checking those out every time. 
And for more videos and podcasts and articles, head over to Laser Time. Thank you very much for watching, and as always, let's go play some video games.